Hello guys, my name is Tom, and in this video I'm going to show you uh, how, how to color grade, basically how I go about it, and the most kind of common mistake that I see people making, which is that they apply their color grade just kind of overall to the whole image, they don't bother separating uh, the their, you know parts of the scene. Uh, and this is especially uh, evident when I see, like, for example, people who don't have a lot of color grading experience, but yet they're, uh, for example, apply some kind of preset or, or lookup table or, you know, what they're commonly referred to as uh, LUTs. Uh, they just kind of slap it on there onto their footage and then, you know, they maybe like the overall look, but, but something, you know, still tells them, okay, it's kind of looking unnatural. And... And the reason is because a lot of times uh, you can add very stylized looking colors to most of the scene, but not when you're applying it, especially to skin tones, uh, you know, to the actors in your scene. Because the second you start adding really weird kind of colors or shades of color into the, the skin tones, then we as human beings, we right away pick that up. Uh, we notice it. We might not know exactly what's wrong, but we just know that, you know, that person doesn't look quite right. Like, and they look like that, like they're sick or something. So uh, I'll show you kind of here. This is in DaVinci Resolve. You can do pretty much the same process in uh, most other uh, color grading or editing applications. DaVinci Resolve, what's kind of cool is you're not doing it as a linear process. You're using nodes. So here's what my first note and uh this was shot actually on a, an s log 2 so i can apply a lot actually lookup table to convert this from s log 2 to rec 709 or basically like kind of st standard video colors um when you look at the here when you look at the waveform you'll actually notice that all of the information is kind of more in the middle there's nothing here in the shadows and the highlights and that's because why, uh, you know, the image kind of looks very flat, right? There's no contrast in it. Before I continue, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. Uh, Skillshare is basically an online, uh, you know, community where you can learn from other uh, creators or basically other people who are experts in, in their area. Especially if you enjoy watching my kind of tutorials, uh, and you're going to find a whole bunch of stuff like that uh, on Skillshare. Uh, for example, here's one that I was kind of watching recently, DaVinci Resolve 15 Fairlight, uh, learning about Adio. Uh, another one about Fusion Wire Removal, like there's pretty much anything, you know, how to do knitting, how to do, you know, uh, there's all kinds of categories, as you can see from creative business, technology, lifestyle, and all that kind of stuff. And you can easily just kind of browse through it and you'll find something. Let's say you're interested in music production for your next film. Boom, right there you have a whole bunch of, um, you know, tutorials or kind of video uh, here, lessons that you can follow. And uh, it's a community with over 25,000 uh, different tutorials. And right now the first 500 people that subscribe uh, using the, my link in the description below will get two months free so you can try out Skillshare for yourself. So the first thing I'll do is on, on the first note is uh, uh, I'm going to apply uh, a little basically of contrast here. So we'll go here to our settings in the bottom. We have contrast here and I'll just increase it. The image just starts getting kind of looking more natural because we're seeing the, you know, the kind of highlights and the shadows there. But also you'll notice here how the image is. It kind of stretches over the, the, the whole waveform. Uh, now I notice overall this image is a little maybe overexposed. So I'll bring it down, take the overall offset and I'll just bring down the, the brightness somewhere there. So it's within safe levels. And that's looking pretty good. Now, another thing you'll notice also if you go to the um, vector scope is kind of the colors, you know, they increase. Like if I turn off this node, you'll notice this is how it was before. When I add contrast, it increases the colors, but it's still, I think it's, you know, could, could be um, kind of basically a little bit more saturated. So I'm going to increase the saturation maybe by here, up to 60 or something, somewhere there. And now it's looking kind of more like a proper video kind of shot. So this is before, flat looking. Now we have this kind of video shot. But, you know, that's basically the beginning of your color grading. So next step is uh, you want to add some kind of a style, right? Some kind of a look to this. So uh, here I'm going to add another node. Uh, you can do this in Resolve by going here to color and you can create nodes. You have different kind of nodes you can create. Um, and I just created a, a regular serial note. So here's my next note. So as you can see, we're going from, this is basically how it is in DaVinci. You're starting with this, this is your input image. Here's the first note where we added the contrast and the saturation. This is before, this is after I added. And now we have another note in which we haven't done anything yet. 
but we're going to. We're going to add some kind of a style, uh, you know, kind of a look. And you can play around here with the color wheels and things like that. So let's say, uh, again, you have no expertise in this and you don't want to kind of mess up. You have some big project coming up and uh, you end up getting some lookup tables, like for example, the ones you can get on my website for free, or uh, there's also, also some that I sell, like these ones, for example, the Cinecolor LUT Pack 1 and 2. And I'm just going to apply one of my lookup tables. So let's go, for example, here. Heat wave, that looks pretty cool. Golden grass. This is actually a shot from uh, a film that I'm working on. It's kind of like this, you know, it's set in South America on this kind of a beach town. Uh, but it's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of suspense there and things like that. So uh, let's say, let me pick one here that I like. Kind of something not, not too bright, a little bit kind of more stylized. So because you can see I can just quickly browse here. This is by bringing up the LUT, uh, basically here at tab. You can kind of browse through these different LUTs uh, or lookup tables. So I'm kind of just browsing through it. As you can see, scrolling one another, seeing quickly how they all look when applied to my footage. And let's say I like this one, this pool party one. Uh, you know, it kind of gives me a nice sort of a stylized look. So I'm just going to double click it. And that is applied now to this node. You can see it because here uh, you can see this little gradation, um, this icon. So that's showing me that uh, there's a lookup table applied to this LUT. And overall, you know, I can kind of now scroll through this shot and yeah, I like how it looks, right? This, this is kind of the, you know, the shot that, that we have. Now, the only thing is, um, you'll notice that uh, the skin tones, right, don't look kind of natural. What I mean by that is they're a little bit kind of pale, almost washed out. Uh, and that will happen usually when you apply, uh, you know, just sort of, like I said, a color preset. Especially if I went with something like, let's say, this crazy, like this one, heat wave. Let, let me apply that, even though this is not the final look I'm going to go for. But let's say I'm just experimenting, I apply this, and I'm like, okay, I like this overall look of the shot, but she's definitely looking like she's sick, right? So that's when, uh, by separating the shot, you can really kind of go in and fine tune, you know, and basically correct a, a lot of these kind of mistakes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another node that goes before this one. So basically in between our initial kind of adding the contrast and colors and then our final look. So in between there, I'm going to uh, apply another node. Is press uh, Shift and S. That creates the, the node up here in between it. And in this node, uh, we want to basically isolate the skin. So I'm going to hide our final color grade so it's just easier to work with. And then here, uh, make sure you have that node selected. We're going to go to our uh, qualifier tool. There's a little color picker. And I'm just going to start picking the, the her skin. Now, when I click on this, nothing really happens in the viewer. And that's because we're looking at the overall image. So we can turn on the highlights, clicking this icon. So now it's showing us this is kind of what we selected. So the, everything else that's gray is, is non-selected. So as you can see, we selected parts of it, but obviously there's still things missing. So I'm going to click now this color picker with the plus sign. And I'm going to just start kind of dragging it over here to make sure that I select her skin tones. Now, as you notice, as I'm doing this, it starts basically picking up, like here, obviously, the other character's skin, but even like things there in the background and, you know, part of her shirt. And that's okay. It's, it's normal because, uh, you know, these colors are going to be kind of similar in, in tone and you can't really separate it. But at the same time, when you may adjust the, the, her skin tone, it's okay if these kind of colors will get adjusted along with it. You'll notice it's kind of like these sort of rough areas here. So I'm going to go to our feather tool and I'm just going to kind of go over it to kind of try to feather out those those areas. So it's it's a bit of, of a smoother transition, basically. So right now, for example, if I want to do manually here, it's showing me in the hue section which colors of hue are selected. So if I drag this out, let's say start picking out more colors, you'll see more things are going to be showing up here in the shot. If I pick everything, then everything's going to show up. But I'm kind of want to like make sure that her skin it's like nice and smooth. There's no none of these kind of patchy holes. Now I can also smooth out the edges. So for example, this is pretty smooth here. If I look at the softness, see this kind of makes the transitions a little bit smoother. Uh, I can also smooth out the saturation here. So I can go on the low part, kind of smooth it out. And that will smooth out these areas here where it kind of, go, you know, the different colors in her shirt. That's kind of looking a little rough. So I'll smooth out that and you can smooth out the other area while I'm at it too. And you can also soften the luminance, basically, selection. So, again, see so you doing this. 
and the highlights also. So as you can see now, it's more of a kind of a smoother transition everywhere. We don't get these bl uh, blacky kind of blotchiness. Uh, now you will notice still a little bit of these blacks here, and that's because uh, this was shot on a you know camera that shoots uh, basically a Sony DSLR that shoots in 8-bit uh, 420 color space. So that's where shooting on a higher quality camera, like for example the new Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera. Is really beneficial. Uh, if I had that camera, I would have, you know, shot on that camera for this project. Unfortunately, uh, that was not the case. So anyway, so this is kind of what we're stuck with. Um, but yeah, now we've made our selection. I can kind of go back to our regular viewing mode, and now that means that our node in this one here, we're only going to be affected these selected areas. So let's say if I wanted to add, you know, red to this shot, well, I can really go and add red to it. But for example, as you can see, it's just adding it to those colors, to those parts of the image. Uh, let's see if I wanted to make her, I don't know, look alien, I can add green and things like that, right? Obviously, that's not what we want, so I'm going to reset that. Um, another thing that's kind of helpful with this is I can go back to our selection here, view mode. And I can see here, it's showing me basically on the ve vector scope, what, are, what colors uh, are where and which, which area. This line here, which by the way, if you can't see this line, you can go to settings and you can enable show skin tone indicator. This is without it, this is with it. That's this line up here. That means that any skin tones, and it doesn't matter whether you're Caucasian, Black, Asian, whatever, unless you're from another planet, uh, all of us here on this planet have the same skin tone, basically color range. So it's all should be along this line. If your colors are, you know, like I said, like if you're going somewhere here or here, it's showing you here the colors see, are going in a completely different direction than this line. That means they're not going to be natural looking, as you can see up here. So that's why we want to kind of go in this direction. Um, and so if once you have this kind of, you know, like I said, the selection, you can go in, as you can see uh, up here, like let's say it was a little bit too much towards the red. You can kind of bring it back more towards this area, which is, you know, again, the kind of more natural skin tones. Let's say it was a little bit too green, as you can see now, this line is much, much, too much to this side. Uh, then you can again grab this and kind of drag it over to kind of bring it to these more natural kind of skin tone colors. And once you're there, and I'm basically doing this by, you know, grabbing the offset here and t taking this little circle and moving it around. So once you kind of have it more or less there on the line, then you can also increase the uh, saturation. You can really make it saturated. Uh, but if you have you know, oversaturated the skin, that also will look unnatural. And you can also desaturate it, make it very, you know, it still looks, you know, human, but it just looks pale, like somebody's kind of gotten a little sick. We want, for me kind of thing, uh, this kind of within the safe area, so it doesn't go past these points here. So somewhere there, I think that's like a good looking skin tone. Uh, and now, though, uh, the problem is that if I go back to our main node here, and I activate our overall color grade, you'll see what happens. And that's basically the problem is, is we're applying that color grade still to the overall image. So it doesn't matter what we did before. We did the selection and we might have adjusted these colors, as you can see. But we've, you know, we've only basically adjusted these colors here. And then afterwards, we're still applying the overall color grade. So kind of what you want to do is you want to go back to this. Uh, and uh, we'll, for example, reset the colors because the colors, again, won't really matter that much. But what we can, what we can use this node for is to actually uh, kind of maybe fix up, let's say, her skin a little bit. Because once we added this, our really kind of extreme here color grade with this LUT, you can see uh, there's little like imperfections here in her, in her skin that kind of showing up and, and kind of just looking a little bit rough. So I'm going to go in this node and I'm going to now uh, my, do my favorite little thing for fixing skin tones, which is the mid-tone detail here. And I'm just going to drag the mid-tone detail down uh, because basically when you increase it, it increases basically the contrast in the mid-tones. If you drag it down, it, it decreases the contrast in the mid-tones. So I'm going to drag it down till it kind of smooths it out, but still looks natural. If I just overdo it, it looks kind of too, too uh, washed out. So somewhere maybe there. Minus 27, that looks pretty good. So if I turn off this node, this is before, this is now. If you want, you can do it even more. So let's see, drag it to somewhere here. So this is before, and this is now, kind of softens it a little bit. If you want to, you can actually go and physically do, go to the, the blur tool here, and you can increase the, the radius of the blur. So you can really make it soft, but, uh, but you know, we'll make it maybe just a little bit softer. 
Uh, yeah, somewhere there, I think it will look good. Um, and again, this is only happening in those areas where we selected basically her skin tones, right? Those kind of colors. So it's not affecting the rest of the image, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, so we did this, we did the kind of softening to her skin, but the color of her skin tone still looks bad. And that's because you have to apply kind of on top of our grade here, we have to apply back some of these kind of original looking skin tones. And the best way to do that is by creating a, a basically a layer mixing node or uh, here. You can, for example, right click up here and go add a node and you can go, for example, layer mixer. So we have one here. And then we're going to add another serial node. So just go up here and uh, or co corrector basically. And this corrector. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go here, take this green. That's the RGB out. We're going to grab it and drag it to the input up here. So that's going back into our layer mixer. Then we're going to take this green that goes outside and we're going to pump it to our final outputted image right there. Again, nothing really happened up here because now we're going to mix on top of that this thing. So we're going to take the RGB out, which is this green, and connect it to this area. Now, this node is completely empty because there's nothing coming into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect, but I'm going to connect the RGB basically from this original uh, shot here. Or actually, no, from this one. So here, I'm going to take the RGB from this one, connect it there. And so now, as you can see, it's just taking all these original colors that we had here. But now afterwards, I also got to take the, the matte or the transparency basically channel, which is the blue uh, here little icon, and connect that to the transparency input on this node. When I do that, as you can see what happens is it basically made everything transparent except... So actually, her whole skin tone is all transparent and then the rest of the shot shows up. So we want to do a re reverse of that. So we're going to go to our key here. And in our key settings here, we have here this little icon for reversal. So I'm going to click that. That reversed it. So now we're again, we're only seeing the skin and everything else is transparent. Uh, here's our shot with the basically overall color grade applied. And then on top of that, I'm putting back these original colors, the original skin tones. I mean, you know, we maybe have natural skin tones. Like if I, for example, were to again, just look at what we have in here, it's more or less the natural skin tones. But it still doesn't fit, right, with the rest of the shot. That's because we kind of have to mix in a little bit of these original kind of kind of uh, colors that our color grade has given in, in, in there. Just maybe not as much, because in here she's looking really yellow. So that's one thing. Uh, so I can go now to our node where we're up reapplying just the skin tones on top. And I can again go to our key here. Uh, the, the node key and I can go here to the key output and this is basically one is basically 100% opaque and if you want to make it transparent you just decrease that so if I for example put it to 0 0.5 it's basically 50% transparent and this is how it's looking so right there if I turn this off this was before our image which is the final color grade and here I'm bringing back some of these original kind of skin tone colors, which is just going to look a little bit more natural. Now, what I would say overall is, uh, you know, especially these uh, lookup tables that, that I have up here that you can get on my website, for example, for this one, uh, which is the, you know, uh, heat wave from Cinecolor Lat Pack 1. Uh, it's an overall lookup tables that I created, which are very uh, kind of pushed to the extreme. And I did that so that in case you really want it that strong, you can have it. But a lot of cases, if you want to tone it down, you can, you can tone it down. And again, you can do this in pretty much any application that uses lookup tables. So in here, I'm going to select our final color grade node. And I'm going to go again to the key tab and then the key output, I'm going to decrease this. So as you can, if I decrease it to zero, you see there's basically that node has no effect. Let's say I want to apply that node, but somewhere, maybe like somewhere here. That's looking pretty good. And again, this is how it looks now with that node applied, but when we don't have the original skin tones back. And when I bring back the original skin tones, you can see it just looks that much nicer, that much better. Just looks basically more natural. But now the cool thing is also is because your color grade is only in this one node, because again, it's not a linear process in, in here by using nodes. So I can now go into this node whenever I want to, and I can just play around now with testing different looks. So let's say uh, maybe for, like I said, for this film, it's not really what I was going for, going for. Maybe something like this, this pool party, I think it looks really cool. I can just double click it, apply this lookup table, and you can see right there, my shot is looking 
nice and natural and that's because in part because i'm bringing back these natural skin tones because this is how it looks when i just apply this the the overall you know um, lookup table and if i increase the intensity of this right now it's at uh, 0 0.8 so i'm going to increase this let's say to 100 percent this is how it's looking it's a cool look i think for the shot but again her skin is starting to look a little natural well like, like i said we have a note here where we're bringing back our skin tone and we're bringing back our original looking skin tones and I can even increase the you know, opacity on this. So somewhere there, I think it's looking pretty cool. And now, as you can see, it's a nice looking shot. Uh, you know, definitely a lot more interesting than just basically having the lat applied. Or for example, before that, you know, where we didn't f kind of smooth out her skin. This is what we started with. We had nothing. We applied the, just the right overall contrast and color. So the shot looks proper. Then we apply basically this look. This is how our lookup table looks. But then to smooth out her skin, we isolated just her skin tones and kind of smoothed it out using the mid-tones and the blurring. As you can see, it makes a big difference. And then the final thing we did is we brought back some of these original skin tone colors on top by doing this. And this is our final shot. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It definitely has a nice stylized look, but as you can see, it, it looks natural. And the reason is, again, because we're making sure that the thing that we humans care about the most, which is other people, that the colors there uh, are looking natural. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a simple process, but as you can see, uh, I hopefully now in the future, whenever you're applying any kind of a color preset or lookup table, that you're not going to just apply it overall equally to the whole shot. You kind of always have to pay attention as to basically what's in your shot and, uh, and, and you know, how it's looking and all that stuff. Uh, because if you have a lot of skin tones visible in there and those skin tones have weird yellowish, greenish or whatever, bluish tints to it, then again, your whole shot is just going to look very unnatural. So anyways, this that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you check back for the next video. And as always, if you want to see more in-depth info about you know different filmmaking techniques, uh, tutorials, or if you want to get actually my lookup tables that I used in this, uh, in this uh, example, and if you want to download the footage from this tutorial, so you can kind of play around with yourself and, and try out these techniques that I showed, then uh, just follow the links in the description of this video, uh, which will take you to my website, or just go to tomantusfilms.com, and again, you'll find it there. And also extra lots that you get only by signing up to my uh, newsletter, and this way you'll also be notified whenever I release a new interesting post or video or things like that, uh, or if I have any sort of discounts uh, on my store. Anyways, once again, my name is Tom Antos, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!